Uh, today's presenter uh, I want to introduce is Dr. Polly Hyslop, and she's an assistant professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the Center for Cross-Cultural Studies. And uh, I hope everyone will risk Polly congratulations because she just successfully defended her dissertation and has earned her PhD. And with that, uh, I'm going to pass it off to you, Polly. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here. Okay, thank you, Joel. I'm just hoping that everybody can hear me. Can you hear me okay, Joel? Yep, sure can. I'll open my, um, my slideshow. Um, can, can you see it, Joel? Uh, not yet. Okay. Looks like it might yeah. pop up soon. Yeah, I think what I need to do is, this is my first time on webinar too, but I think I need to screen share um, at some point. Let's see. All right, so screen share. Okay, so desktop. Whoops. Okay, sorry everybody. I thought I was ready. So, um, save as. I can actually see my uh, my dis my my uh, presentation, but you can't see it yet. I I will certainly open it up right now. Okay, my webinar. All right. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to screen share. Desktop. Okay, so my webinar. Okay, what I want to do is, can you see it, Joel? Yeah. Oh, you can actually see my webinar? My, okay, great. This is yep. wonderful. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, I wanted, to, all right, let's. So what I want to do is make it a slideshow. I'll start from the beginning. All right, I'm very, I'm sorry for uh, the delay. This is my first time uh, presenting at a webinar. Uh, as Joel introduced me, my name is Polly, uh, Dr. Polly Hyslip. This is the first time I'm introducing myself as a doctor. Um, I recently defended my thesis at, in here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And today I'm going to share with you the, the uh, my my research and um, I've changed it so it's uh, more user friendly and not so academic so that um, it, so um, so I have less slides but the topic of my of my research is called circle peacemaking in Cake Alaska a case study of indigenous planning in dispute systems design and um, as Joel said I'm an assistant professor at the indigenous studies program here at this Center for Cross-Cultural Studies at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Before I begin, I would like to thank the people that helped me in my research in Cake Alaska, and I'll introduce Cake Alaska uh, shortly in my uh, presentation. But I, but most of the most of the people in my study are Clinkets. And Cake Alaska is a predominantly Clinket community. Uh, they are named, their names are Mike Jackson, and he was the former magistrate. He is a former magistrate of Cake, and he's keeper of the circle. Anthony Gasolim, Ivans, and Elaine Gadaki, and uh, they're they're listed or their photos are here on the page. Paul Aceveda, Dr. Ruth Demert and James Smith, the former VPSO of Cake and supporter, and Philip Gattensby, uh, peacemaker out of Whitehorse, Yukon Territory, and um, I have a non four anonymous contributors to my research. This is an overview of my presentation. Uh, before I begin, I'll introduce myself and my language. I will, um, give you my dissertation topic, 
my research question and how I gathered my information and my major funding findings of my research and the conclusion. And, and I'm hoping to have time at the end for questions. Poly High Slip Chancy, North Bay Cade Saint Ihal, Upper Tanana Athabascan Dene Di De. North Bay Cade Di De, Nesu Godin Di De, Shta Floyd High Slip Mosi, Michigan Di De, Scottish Godin Di De. Shna, Pali High Slip Mosi, Northway K D De, Sto, Bertha Dimmit Mosi, Shia, Benjamin Schwartz Mosi. And if you see that little red dot, that's where I'm, I live on the border between Canada and, uh, and Alaska. The border actually came through, I, I believe, when my grandmother was a small child. So the border is not, um, it's not a long time event in our, our community. Here's a photo of my parents, my father, and how I, what I said when I introduced myself is my name is Polly Hyslip. I am from a village called Northway. I, my clan is Naisu, I'm from the Naisu clan. My father's name is Floyd Hyslip. He's from Michigan and his people are from Scottish, he's from the Scottish people. And my mother is Polly Hyslip, and she's from Northway. And my grandmother is Bertha Dimmit Mosi. She's shown here in, um, well, her name is Bertha Dimmit um, in the middle photo. And she's from uh, the Northway, Canada side. The border, like I said, was not there when she was young. And that's my son, Benjamin Schwartz. Uh, we come from a matrilineal society. So my, uh, the clan is passed down through um, my mother. So um, in, this in this slide, I would like uh, Joel to um, ask in the poll, do you live in rural Alaska? And I actually think I answered that, on that question because you explained to me that you're from Idaho, Tyonic, Fairbanks, Bethel, Dillingham, Juneau, South Dakota, and Kenai. So rural Alaska, I define it as a place you have to fly to. So I would say um, Bethel is rural, but um, but for me, rural Alaska is like the tiny, tiny villages. But um, so um, if you're if you consider Bethel and Dillingham rural, because you do have to fly to Bethel and Dillingham, um, please do. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. All right. So my research journey, my research journey began before I even came to, um, before I even started my study. Um, I was born and raised in rural Alaska. I was born in Northway, where I'm from. I, um, we lived a couple of years in Galena, and then my father retired in Tanana. So I know uh, that I've had, I've had firsthand experience with my with, uh, native relationship to the uh, justice field, uh, the outside field. Um, I know from my own family experience, I've had family members in the system as youth. Um, and one of them is, an, is a uh, response, is an outstanding uh, young, a uh, man now, and he is a family member, and um, and he lives in a village. The other one never made it out of this system, so it's a bit heartbreaking um, for me and for our family. And he's still in jail; he's in and out of jail. So he started his journey in the system at age ten. So, so that's I brought all that into my research, but. Um, but when I became a member of the Upper Town and a Wellness Committee in a place called Toke, Alaska, which is near my village of Northway, a predominantly non-native community, uh, this is when I became interested in designing a dispute resolution, or such as peacemaking in our um, community. We, it was a, we were looking at the high levels of minor consuming alcohol in the villages surrounding Toke. Toke is like a hub town for the Upper Tanana villages. Um, in Northway, my village is one of them. 
we looked at the restorative justice initiative. We, we, we trained, I was trained as a restorative justice practitioner in Canada. Um, our, our wellness committee consisted of troopers, the mental health uh, counselors, educators. We had professionals on our team. And, um, and we met at the courthouse once a month. And, um, and we, we talked about how we would design a, perhaps a system or an, an initiative that would face or where we could work with youth um, r rather than having them get into the system. The problem we had was lack of participation from our uh, surrounding communities. Yes, every once in a while, somebody would show up and, because I think they were more curious as what we were doing and we were meeting at the courthouse. And as a native person, many of us know that we, that going to court is not often a, uh, a visit. It's often because we're in trouble for some reason. Um, so, so despite our good efforts, and there are many of us who would meet once a month, our, our initiative never really got off the ground. Uh, we did hold a circle in Northway, uh, my village, I, and I participated in that circle. And we helped a, a youth who was not really from Northway, but her father lived there with a Northway resident. And so she had come to spend a winter and she had gotten into trouble. And uh, so our circle looked and tried to help her. We did get her graduated and she did uh, leave the village. And so, um, so we, I would consider that successful because we were, uh, her, uh, members of the circle were her support team. Other, but other than that, we we just couldn't get up. We just could not uh, get off the ground, and so that's when I actually started looking around at um, other initiatives in rural Alaska that seemed to um, to to meet the needs and, and uh, of their community members. Oh, okay. So. What I was doing is I was looking at, I'm sure, um, what I found was Cake Alaska was, it's a small, it's a Tlingit community in Southeast Alaska. Its population is 556. It's on an island and it's accessible only by plane or, or water. And what I found was they had a peacemaking circle there and uh and so that that piqued my interest because i was i was because it was it was native and it was something that was making a lot of it was getting a lot of attention for their high success rates with the people they worked with especially with the youth and and uh what what caught my interest was um how they had their beginnings because they had a high rate of suicides in the late 1980s and alcoholism and their community just seemed to be in um, depths of despair. Uh, there was a, a newspaper, uh, newspaper uh, article about cake and, and it, it didn't really shine a good light on, on the community. Oops. Here's a, here's a couple of photos of cake, it, just to give you an idea. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. That's me traveling by ferry to cake. That was my preferred form of travel there. Uh, cake is nestled between uh, some high mountains, so a small plane would take me there, but it was always like a little bit bumpy and the mountains seemed too close by. <laughs> All right, so, so let me introduce you to Circle Peacemaking and Cake. Uh, circle Peacemaking is a community volunteer circle guided by the keeper of the circle, the facilitator. It accepts referrals from the state court and agencies, law enforcement, and local families. It has support from the organized village of Cake, uh, its government, at local school and health agency. And I put emphasis on the, on the volunteer basis of the circle. My research question was, what are, what are the elements of design 
of circle peacemaking that creates a sustainable dispute resolution process in Alaska. And at this point, I don't know if I asked Joel to post the poll, do you work with young people? So what are the elements of design for circle peacemaking that creates a sustainable dispute resolution process in CAKE? That was, that was important to me because we had tried to start a, a funded um, process in TOKE and despite the funding, and it was a generous funding, we just couldn't get off the ground. We just couldn't get it, uh, get, we, 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 there was much more work than, than we had envisioned. We were, we were professionals, but, and we were coming together for a discussion once a month, but that, that didn't seem enough. And we hired somebody with the money that we received but that just didn't seem to work. So this is why I was interested in what was CAKE, their peacemakers doing, and what we, what we call in dispute systems design, uh, change agents, or, uh, or the, the players in the, in, in, the, in the system. So why was this study important? I think uh, for people working with youth, we know that, that the problem with youth who get into trouble, we know the system is not meeting their needs. In Alaska, there was a 2013 study done by the Indian Law and Trust Commission that, fun that said the criminal justice system in Alaska is fundamentally on the wrong track with native people. And the problem, and so some numbers will to kind of spell out what's happening here in Alaska. The Alaska Native population is 15% of the population of Alaska. In the corrections, correction system, there's 35% of Alaska Natives, American Indian. And the youth under 18, I'm taking a 2015 statistics, but it hasn't changed much. There's 36% of youth under 18 within the system who've been referred to the system. And um, many of them are from rural Alaska. So before I go any further, I just wanted to briefly let you know how I conducted my research. This is a case study, meaning that I took an ideographic approach saying that this, what I, what I learned from Cake and what Cake shared with with me, uh, it was what worked in cake. I wanted to take what worked in cake as to, to help to see if it could work with other communities. And, but I do know that one, that what works in cake may not work in maybe in my own community of Northway, um, but definitely there are some really good um, strengths that uh, cake was willing to share with us about their circle peacemaking design. Um, what I did was I had, I interviewed 11 peacemakers and supporters, and I actually, I did some archival research at um, the state of the ju judiciary reports uh, and rules of court. And I also uh, did, I also did some explore, I, I watched, it was a descriptive. Um, research. I, when I went to CAKE, I observed the events in CAKE. This is me and CAKE uh, having lunch at the elders' residence. It's important as an indigenous researcher that I create relationships, good relationships within the community. What I found from the state, from the state as of the judiciary reports to the to the legislature uh, 44 years is that, um, that the chief justices really, there was, there's been interest for 44 years in creating and, and working with rural Alaska. Um, and so why, why is this important? Um, what, why, is, why did I look at the state of the judiciary reports? Well, I think that, um, the, the reports 
the chief justices are there they are the the top level of the courts and these rep reports to the legislature their funders our, our overview of their priorities for the year, the, the following year, they're, they're giving priorities. What did they want funding for? And they're asking for funding. So what did I find? And I found that the, the first three years, the, there were uh, the, the state courts created what were called village conciliation boards in six villages in Alaska. And after the third year, they wrapped it up. There was it. It wasn't working, and um, and this is what we in the dispute systems design field call a, a, a top-down approach. We're going to come into your village, and we're going to kind of build something, design something for you, based on what we think is best for you, or what we think will work for you. From from 1987 to 2006, there was mention and support of rural-based dispute resolution initiatives, meaning that they talked about it. They were they they mentioned what Mike Jackson was doing in Cake, Alaska. They mentioned some studies that were done, and so they were supportive of the studies. However, in 2013, things began to change. There was more, there was stronger support for community-based dispute resolution initiatives. They actually mentioned it 43 times. So the, so the message is loud and clear that the Chief Justice and the court systems ready to work with, with rural Alaska. They may not recognize tribal sovereignty as the state of Alaska does not tribal, recognize tribal sovereignty um, though the federal court does, the federal government does. However, that, to me, what, if they're willing to work with, with the rural Alaska, I see that as a good sign. Of course, we have to ask ourselves why, but we, we in Alaska know that the oil rev industry is what supports a lot of our uh, support uh, organizations here in Alaska, and so our oil industry is dwindling, and so the jobs are dwindling as well. So I can see where there's a there's a cor correlation between uh, state of Alaska being a lot more interested in working with rural Alaska, because a lot of their clients are, are from rural Alaska or are native. And also the the court set up the rules of court how we're going to conduct proceedings. And so in 22, there was mentioned that the, that the state court uh, of referrals to tribal court, elders court, and other ethnic organizations for civil cases. However, in 2011, uh, there's increased rules of policy for referrals for mediation and restorative justice programs in rural Alaska at the agreement of all parties for both civil and some criminal cases. So you can see there's, there's, uh, there's something happening here. So, so I just kind of set the stage of saying that this is what, what hap what's happening from the state kind of field, or um, the Anglo-American field, I call it. So what I did was I went and I did the interviews regarding peacemaking design. And these are four areas that I kind of focused on. Peacemaking is a way of life, or this is what I came to, um, from my from the interviews, this is how mm -hmm. I categorized it in four different categories: in peacemaking as a way of life, indigenous leadership in a circle, and elements of a design in circle peacemaking and resistance. It's really important as um, as change agents in the dispute systems design field that we re recognize that there will be resistance to local peacemaking design. So, peacemaking is a way of life, and these are these these are themes that I re, that I that I found from all the interviews with the eleven participants, is that the community volunteers are the number one reason for peacemaking, sustainability, and cake. So I suppose that's really a simple answer, but it really was kind of a revealing answer to me, and something I intuitively knew, but but really. 
peacemaking circles are based upon the wellness and of the community and the the volunteers whether uh, of your community are they um, volunteers the peacemakers are good caring volunteers who are willing to participate in a circle they're interested in the wellness of their community they are the ones who support the victims and guide the wrongdoers so the peacemakers are people who've lived who are living good lives and who may have been through the fire themselves but they've come out and they have strong messages to help the wrongdoers and the victims. And they're always help where help is needed. They never ask. And that was a strong theme. And I did see that when I observed the events that the peacemakers were out there getting up at 7 a.m., making the breakfasts and stuff like that. And so the indigenous leadership in a circle, you know, the, so what does that mean? It means who are, who are the people in a circle? And, of, and so the biggest, strongest answer was elders. Elders, they are the strength of the circle. They're the strength of our community. And the former wrongdoers, these are the people who have been through the circle and have been helped by the peacemakers in the circle. When they come back, they are, they are evidence that the circle really works. And supporters are, are so important to the circle as leaders. I call them leaders. They're the ones who, who are uh, the ones who refer the uh, the youth to the circle. They're, they're the um, probation officers, the VPSO, the judge, wh whoever works with the young people um, to support the circle. And the theme number three is traditional values and teachings are important to the circle. What that means is that the circle is based upon our, our, our ancient laws, our, our traditional laws, and one of, the, one of the participants said, our ancestors are the pillars of what we do now. And the elements of the design of circle peacemaking and cake, I'm kind of talking a little faster because it's 1233, is that the principles and practices, this is what they told me, is that's important for your circle strength, is keep an open mind. Don't, don't, when you go into the circle, just allow and trust the process. And practice strict confidentiality. Those who are from small communities know what I mean. Whatever is done and said in the circle stays in the circle. And they did, they did um, find people who broke the confidentiality and they, they tracked them down. You know, so it's like they, they take this very seriously, the confidentiality of the circle. And everything was agreed by consensus. And, and, so, and, and speaking from the heart, that means just tell the truth from the heart. Um, we put our professional caps aside, we sit there in a circle, and we become part of the circle. We become humans in the circle. And peacemaking is the law of the land. And I did um, mention that, you know, it's our ancient teachings, and we who, and the indigenous people, well, from, I'll speak for myself, it's like I was raised in rural Alaska, I know what my mother taught me, and so, you know, we have a lot of laws. They're called, we, I call them ancient laws. You know, I, where I'm from, we, they're called EG. If you break the law, you break your luck. You know, if you, uh, so we we're taught, you know, from, well, I was taught um, by my aunties and also by my mom, but mostly by my aunties um, of what was proper, what, and my, what was the relationship I was to have with my opposite clan members, uh, the relationship with, um, uh, with the land and, uh, it just how to maintain solid, good, balanced relationships with, um, within my community. Okay. So, um, let me see if I can, whoops. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't really actually see what it, it says peacemaking something, but it's, I can't close that window or I can, well, let me just see. Okay, so you can read it and I, I can't see it, but um, I can't close this window either. This is my first time webinar, so please, I'm, I'm grateful for your patience. Okay, so peacemaking, well, also, um, no time limitation. We know that when we're in the court or when we're in tribal court, there, there's caseloads and there's, there's severe time limitation. With peacemaking circles, you can go as long as you have to go. Um, so 
that's that's the peacemaking design in cake that was just some of it that i'm sharing with you and so i wanted to actually spend some time and not a lot on resistance to design of peacemaking circles and so i wanted to begin to say that peace that circle peacemaking or change like everything that we do as change agents we create change and change you'll always meet resistance even good change will meet resistance and i and i found that in my own work to be true so so we have to prepare as change agents to 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 anticipate the resistance there's resistance from the community um and the some of the resistance that uh cake uh peacemakers met was that this is just not the way it's done around here or um i or you know there was there was so many other entities that um didn't want the change even though there was a lot of change to be that was needed and the biggest change the biggest challenge they have is buy-in from the professional world the professional world um so they invite the, the counselors to sit in the circles or maybe even um, the attorneys. But you know, for this to work, the professionals need to, should be sitting in a circle with the community. In fact, um, we actually have a peacemaking training happening in Northway on May 14th through 16th. And we're inviting the professionals to the circle as well. All right, so I just want to go back to to the this the resistance. What they what um, what mediators say who are uh, creating change in in uh, in the organizations uh, say that um, have tea with the demons, like have tea with the fears. Often that we play, often the youth drinking, high incidences of youth drinking in the community, that might just be a symptom of the deeper problem. Face the issues, because um, we all kind of like to stay away from conflict. We're, you know, we're all, native people especially, are conf it's like we, we resist conflict. And so we actually pay a price when we do that. So we, to, for a system to work or for change agents to create a peacemaking within the circle, they, they need to work um, to face the demons. Right now, just by my observation, Cake is a wonderful town. They have a lot of uh, community events. There's, there's, uh, peacemakers are, are always there um, and they, they focus a lot on their youth. They, they really make sure that the youth are doing well. They have their valleys like all communities, but the cake uh, to me is a thriving, healthy community. So this is where I really wanted to end up. It's like based upon my study, the interviews uh, in this research, I came up with what I call indigenous dispute systems design. It's not exactly something, if that's not a, a phrase that I made up, I actually, I borrowed it, but um, it's one that I'm going to carry carry forth. But um, if you're interested in in working with youth in designing a, um, something in your community, I suggest that. And this is what I learned from Cake Two: is that hold community meetings, face you know, for for you need to have your community buy-in because these are where you get your peacemakers. Find your peacemakers in your community. Um, there was a they held Cake held very a lot of um, circle uh, community meetings. And it wasn't all agreement. We, we have to re remember that we have to recognize and respect the disagreements. And I just touch on defining the conflicts in your, oh, I think I'm supposed to ask something else. Um, what, see, did I ask? Number three, are you interested in designing a peacemaking circle in your community? All right, thank you. So these, these are the eight um, elements of design that I, that I found from my research, from CAKE and from my interviews, is um, to find the conflicts in your community, in your community meetings, or even just meeting with individuals or organizations 
but um, the change agents must get a feel, and you already kind of know if you live in rural Alaska, or you kind of know what's happening in your community. But define the conflicts, the real conflicts in your community. It can be that it can be that that um, there are not enough events for the young people in the community. So um, so that creates a lot of boredom. So kids get into trouble, or maybe there's a lot of drug and alcohol abuse in your community because. Kids getting into trouble is just a, a lot of times it's just a symptom of the deeper conflicts, so the diff, deeper issues in your community. And, and a part of indigenous planning is create, envision a safer and healthier community. We always get caught up on what I can't do or what we can't do, or maybe you have a grant funding, but just envision, just think about what is it that you want to see in your community. In Cake, Cake had the highest, one of the highest rates of suicide in their community. And so their peacemakers envisioned, you know, the, you must have a visionary uh, among you or, or um, of a safer and healthier community and you must have that vision yourself. What is it that you want to see from your community? Start with that. So, th you know, I have it at, from one to 10, but you can start anywhere here and you can add your own. So, um, you know, for, for indigenous planners or an indigenous planning, and for all planning, we think about what is the best, better world that we can create for our youth. So start with that. And peacemaking as a way of life, this is what we've been taught. You know, one of our biggest values as, as uh, indigenous people is we're taught to help out one another, especially in rural Alaska. So this is, you know, without being asked, we don't need to be asked, you know, help out one another. And then I, I talked about preparing for resistance and constraints in local design. Yes, just just know that it will exist, you know, and be prepared for it so it doesn't um, surprise you. So number four is, um, what is a poll question, or did we ask it already? What are the biggest challenges you have working with young people? And that's a chat type of question. So you'll have to answer them in chat. And number, and number six is um, create capacity for peacemaking. What does that mean? It's um, creating trainings for peacemaking, like what we're doing in Northway. Um, we're, going, we're bringing in Harold Gattensby, and he's going to, we're going to have three days of peacemaking training. And we're just going to, that, that kind of opens up the discussion is of what, what is it that our community needs, and can peacemaking work in our community? And sometimes peacemaking may not be, um, may not be like the circle process is just a form. It's one way to to uh, to sit together and talk. But in Northway, we have different ways of resolving our conflict if there's conflict, um, and so we can bring that to the circle. We, you know, it's one size does not fit all. You know, so it's like what works in Northway may not work in um, in your community, but because we have our different ways of resolving conflict. And I can't emphasize enough to recognize the place-based leadership in peacemaking design. The people who live in the communities are the strength of the community. And this is where I go to the inside-outsider kind of um, support or uh, our supporters and peacemakers, because the supporters are so important, but they may not live in the community. They may be the judges, the social workers, that um, the probation officers who, who want to, to work with the community but may not live there. They're, they To recognize a place-based leadership, how do you actually recognize it? Well, you kind of visit the community and you go to the events and you see who are the traditional peacemakers who are recognized in their community because traditional peacemaking and leadership are, um, are, are in tribal court or tribal council leadership, government leadership are entirely different. You know, traditional leadership, uh, for we indigenous people from our communities, we recognize them as our elders, we recognize them as the people who help out elders, as the people who may not have a lot of money or even a lot of degrees, but they may be the good people of our community that we can actually rely upon. And, um, and I can go on and on with all these steps. Um, and if you, and, and you can actually, I'm teaching a class on, um, on this, on these steps. So what I encourage my students to do is just create their own steps, you know, what works for their community. 
But what, but what I really emphasize is create close relationships with the people who work with youth. If you're in the rural Alaska, get to know the people who work with youth and who are the authorities outside your um, village. And, and I encourage the people who are outsiders to the village to get to know the people within the community. Go to their events. Go to um, become part of the community because building trust is the most is very very important between native and non natives. So I'm not quite sure how to go from there, but this is this is a conclusion. I've concluded. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, you can email me at um, physlip at alaska.edu. And um, I think, Joel, you'll have to guide me from here because I think that there might be questions or there might be, um, do they come? I'm not quite sure how to go from here. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, Polly. Uh, yeah, if, Polly, you should be able to click the uh, Q&A button. Okay, um, I have. So, I, I don't know, we have at least one question. Um, if anyone else has questions, you're welcome to um, ask them in the chat box, um, or you can use the Q&A box if you could find that. Okay, so um, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, so Darren Snyder has asked, could you please repeat when and where the peacemaking circle is happening? And it's, um, it's happening in Cake, Alaska, K-A-K-E, Alaska. And there might be other peacemaking circles in Alaska, and I'm, I'm sure there are, but the, my study was done in Cake, Alaska. And because if you Google Cake Alaska or Circle Peacemaking Cake Alaska, you'll get a lot of information that um, you might be interested in um, if you, on, off the website. Um, okay, so uh, David Snyder's asked, can you explain the structure of the circles? For example, is there a talking stick passed around? Yes, there's a talking stick. Oh, okay, so I'll answer live. Yes, there's a talking stick that's passed around. I think they use um, whatever the circle decides. And I think um, the keeper of the circle has a, um, a talking stick. I know he does. And they use the talking stick. And also, if you download the manual that I, um, for, that I, that I gave Joel to um, put, on, put on this uh, webinar, um, that, that manual is from Cake, and it will give you uh, instructions. Um, but yeah, you, you do use a talking stick, and it's really important to use it because, one, because when one person's talking, everybody listens. So it's a great listening uh, circle as well. The peacemaking circle is a listening circle. It teaches us compassionate listening. All right, and we will make that... Um... Polly mentioned a, uh, a manual and we'll make that document available um, and I'll share that with everybody in a few seconds how we're going to do that or in a few minutes how we're going to do that. Um, Polly, I know a few people have answered your question about challenges with youth in the yeah. chat box. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to address those and uh, some folks might be wanting to uh, stay anonymous about those challenges. So if you want to share them with the group, just don't include any names. Okay, so I, how would I access that actually? Yeah. Um, if you click the chat button, it's near where the Q&A button was. Okay, so, um, let's see. All right, okay, so I'm going to actually close out my, oh, I can't do that, okay. Let's see, research basket. Hmm, okay. Would you ask me the questions? Because I can't find it. Oh, sure. So they're not questions. We just have some folks that have shared their answers on um, just the challenges that they have in working with young people. Oh, OK. Oh, okay. Um, so for instance, here we have someone saying, uh, a parent will often try and minimize what their youth have done. Um, like the fact that they are in trouble over something they did is unreasonable and not wanting to work through it in a serious and impactful way. And so that was an answer to, oh, that was one of the challenges? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, well, thanks for sharing. That is definitely a challenge. It's, um, you know, I, it would, I think it, that, that would be one of the uh, resistance that you would wanna be prepared for when you come to the circle. 
um, because parents, I am a parent and, and I have learned this through the, through the years and I've heard it from uh, other people is that parents are the last ones that will admit if their child is, has problems. And so um, it's difficult for parents to, to, to admit this. So that is a resistance that you have to be prepared for working with you. Is you're going to have, often you're going to have resistant parents. And so what do you do when the parents are resistant? And um, every, every answer is different. Um, my, the first one I would say is like meet with the parents um, before the circle convenes and talk to them. That, that would be what I would say. And also when they, when they come to the circle, um, they will hear the, uh, what other people have done or uh, experiences from other parents in the circle. So sometimes they just need that support. And the circle is a, is, um, a great source of support. Gotcha. Okay. So we have another, uh, another person here has said, uh, some of the biggest challenges we encounter are dysfunctional families, a lack of parental guidance, uh, roving families, and a lack of commitment to high school education. Mm -hmm. They say it's hard to keep students current on their work when they don't go to school and are facing homelessness and hunger and parents who aren't committed to their child's welfare. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, those, they, you know, having a circle is a source of support. And the people in the circle are, and like I, like I've, I've said, and I'll, and and what's important to me is the the success. And I don't really like to use the word success, but are the effectiveness, because um, some of the words just mean. Well, I'm not going to go into that, but the effectiveness and the strength of a circle in a community depends on the wellness of the community, the commitments of the members of the community. So you may, if you don't have, if you don't have that in your community, your community may not be ready. So it could be that there are different, there are introduction steps. Like our community was not ready. So we did, we, we just came and we talked, we talked, um, we have to bring in some, um, education about what peacemaking circles are. And a lot of times the community, like, um, and I'm thinking about this is like, maybe the community still has that attitude that they will fix us, you know? So the community, of, so you as a change agent may have to look at what's the strength, analyze the strength of your community and all our communities are strong, but are there volunteers? Are there peacemakers in your community? Because these are the strength of your, of your community, of the circle. So yes, I, I am, I, as much as I want to think, you know, that our, you know, that these problems do not exist in our villages of um, parents that are irresponsible of drug abuse, of um, alcohol abuse, and of homelessness, and, and, and um, parents who are not taking the responsibility. You know, you know, look at the issues, really. You know, a lot of our parents may not have had parents. We've had, um, you know, boarding schools where parents were, were not raised to, uh, to know parental to become parents. So these, though, know, dig, 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 there's, there might be more issues than, you know, the child is just a symptom of the issue. So yes, I, I just, um, I just, I would never discourage people, you know, to, to not try to build, to build, to resist building a circle in your community, a peacemaking forum in your community because of all the problems, but you definitely have to find the peacemakers in your community. I hope I've answered that. I've kind of everywhere with that answer, but I definitely know what you mean. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much, Polly, for presenting today. Um, just one last thing. I'm going to launch a short uh, survey for everybody. And if you could, um, please just answer a couple questions to help us um, you know, continue putting these on and, and do them better in the future. Uh, while, while you're going through that, um, again, thanks again. We, we have made a recording of this webinar. Uh, we're going to make that a recording available to everybody. Uh, and I'll send that out uh, in an email to everyone who's registered um, on how to access that recording. It'll also include a transcript uh, and supporting materials um, such as 
the cake peacemaking manual that Polly referenced today. Um, and Polly, anything else that you may have made reference to today, uh, we'd love to get that from you so that we can make that available to everybody. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future webinars, please send us an email uh, at the email on the screen. If you have any questions uh, for Polly, I know she made her email available earlier. If you didn't get a chance, uh, you're welcome to send those to us and we'll forward them along to her. Um, or Polly, if, if you're able to access the chat box, maybe you can throw your email there into the chat box. Um, but yeah, thank you. We'll we'll leave this open for just a couple more minutes here to let people finishing the finish the poll. Uh, if you have any other questions for Polly, feel free to uh, ask those in the next uh, two minutes or so, and then we'll go ahead and uh, sign off at one o'clock. Thanks again for everybody everybody for attending. Thank you, everybody.